G'day. Um, on the forum there was a request put up to try and explain the ins and outs of Thiesman's weather comp strategy or how Thiesman's weather comp works. So I set about writing out um, the ins and outs of, of how it functions along with the mathematics to explain where the data comes from, where the curves are constructed. And that's been quite an interesting process because you just don't know how much you don't know until you try and teach it or try and explain it. And uh, it's been very interesting. I've had to uh, extrapolate some new formulas from some of the formulas in the SIBSI design guide in order to come up with the data to construct the graphs. And it's been a long process, spent a lot of time on this. And um, got some interesting ideas. I've learned a few things as well, things that I didn't really understand about weather comp and about pump speeds. And maybe even a few of the bits and pieces I wrote in this at the beginning get a little bit contradicted by the knowledge I've learned as I've gone through, but not to a degree that I thought it was worth rewriting it. But um, hopefully it won't be too confusing because there's perhaps a few little, um, a few little bits in it that don't quite add up um, as I unraveled some of the mysteries as I went through. One of the concerns I've got with explaining weather comp is that to understand weather comp you have to understand an awful lot about heating design and about radiator outputs and uh, I think that that makes weather comp seem like it's extremely complicated but actually weather comp is actually it's really simple but you can't understand it unless you understand all of the other aspects. So the whole process that I'm going to go through explaining how it does work is going to be mainly explaining how the components work that we utilise to make weather compensation work. I hope that makes sense. But um, it does to me. I hope it does to you. So anyway, eight pages um, I've written for this, including some graphs, so some of the pictures take up a bit of space. There's quite a lot to go through. So, um, so here we go. So, weather compensation. Understanding heat loss and emitter output is fundamental to understanding Wiesman's weather compensation strategy. Weather compensation is best suited to high mass, high heat loss properties when not used with internal reference as the main factors are the internal to external temperature difference and the insulation values, U values, in low mass, values, in low mass highly insulated properties like modern new builds, the effect of local heat source and loss is far greater as a proportion of the heating factors and internal reference may well be required. All forms of weather compensation aid the emitters in matching output to heat loss while increasing condensing efficiency by reducing both the return and flow temperatures when appropriate. A wide delta T is more efficient than a low flow temperature. Those, so maintaining a wider delta T and reducing the return temperature lead to better condensing and heat extraction. Not a part of weather compensation but worthy of note is the concept of reducing flow with boiler output to maintain a wide delta T. When we design a heating system, we design for worst reasonably expected conditions. Again, as a side note, 5030 design gives additional capacity to deal with unexpected low temperature conditions. For the southeast, SIBSI recommend minus two as a design criteria for outside low winter temperatures. First, let's look at heat loss basics. Heat loss from a building is driven by delta T. Heat inside looks to equalize with the lower outside temperature. The rate at which heat can move from inside to outside is dependent on the insulation values of the building fabric and the ventilation losses. The rate at which heat passes through a given building element is expressed as a U value. A U value is denoted as watts per meter squared per degree Kelvin. For our use, centigrade can be supplemented for K or Kelvin as the scale is identical. Watts per meter squared per degree centigrade. 
expresses the value of power in watts, moving through a one meter squared area of the element for each one degree centigrade of temperature difference between inside and outside temperatures. A note at this point is that reducing internal temperature by one degree centigrade would reduce the heat loss by one twenty third under this design criteria, or 4.4%. Underfloor heating, for example, reduces the internal temperature by one degree centigrade. When we, heat, when we calculate heat loss for a property, the sum of all the areas of all the elements and the U values for each arrive at a rate of heat loss in watts per degree centigrade. Ventilation heat losses are similar and can be added. Now we have the rate of heat loss for the property per degree centigrade. It is worth noting that internal factors should have been allowed for at this stage of the calculation, such as different ventilation rates and target temperatures. Let's think about this now. So for example, if the rate of heat loss is 435 watts per degree centigrade, and our internal design temperature is 21 degrees centigrade, an expected low outside temperature is minus two. Our delta T from inside to outside is 23 degrees. 23 times our heat loss per degree centigrade, so that's 23 times 435 watts, is equal to 10,000 watts or 10 kilowatts. Following this logic, if 11 degrees centigrade was the delta T, then 11 times 435 watts per degree centigrade would give us a heat loss of 4,785 watts or 4.785 kilowatts. The idea behind weather compensation is to adjust the heat input to the property to match the heat loss. The accuracy of this depends on the design of the weather compensation control. Poor controls match the heat loss inaccurately and give rise to the notion that weather compensation is a poor option for control. Poor understanding of implementation of control strategies lead to poor control. So then I've got a worked example here. So maybe I'll take the camera and, and show the, for the examples. But what I've done is I've taken the, um, some plotting points to create a graph and I've used uh, it, Delta T's from internal to external, starting at 23, which is at our uh, maximum uh, or our main design criteria, if you like, of, of the lowest expected weather uh, outside temperature and some various other temperatures. So I've used the Delta T of 5, 10, 15 and 23. I've multiplied those by the loss per degree centigrade. Of 435 um, which has given us the figures of I'll show you the figures here 10,000 watts 6,525 watts 4,350 watts and 2,175 and if we plot these on a simple graph um, we can see relative to the outside temperature the the values of heat loss and that constructs a straight line to give me a little bit of my graph drawing. I haven't um, actually used a rule, but um, the, the, the arrangement is linear. So now there may be some more uh, complicated factors involved in this, but this is kind of simplistic um, view of it. And then domestic, most of the other factors that you come across make little difference. Um, we've already covered internal reference as well on this for uh, low mass buildings. So that's looking at the heat loss. So looking at the um, the rates of heat loss depending on outside temperature, you can see we've got linear in the example, but radiators don't work the same. They're not linear. So for an equal reduction in temperature, we don't get an equal reduction in output. And if we look in the SIBSI design guide, there's a calculation to calculate the F1 factor, which includes the factor for the redu redu reduced um, effectiveness of radiators at lower temperature, where it uses a power of 1.3 um, to make this adjustment. It used to be, I noticed in there, 1.24 one time, 
and in the later versions has changed to 1.3 so not quite sure what uh, Sibsi decided was the difference but anyway it's now 1.3 and we're running with the Sibsi as our uh, source of information or one of the sources of information for the forum so let's go with it right so uh, meter output radiators charts rated at delta t50 so the radiator charts we normally get they actually have delta t50 and delta t60 in them but um, ignore the 60 let's go with the 50. Um, this is basically a delta t between the mean water temperature of the radiator and the air temperature in the room delta t50 is a mean water temperature of 70 degrees centigrade at a target room temperature of 20. so we've got the 20 degrees air temperature the difference is 50, add the 20 to the 50, becomes a 70. This value gives us a design starting point for radiator sizing. Wiesman recommended a design of 5030, so that's on the radiator a flow temperature of 50 degrees and a return temperature of 30 when we are at a maximum load, a maximum design load. For a radiator system, this is a flow of 50 and return of 30, as I've already said, or mean water temperature of 40. At our relevant outside low temperature. Sorry, I'm repeating myself, but it doesn't hurt. The delta T used to rate radiators is at a mean water temperature of 70 C, Wiesman at 40 C. The domestic heating design guide gives us a formula to allow for correct radiator selection from the chart for any chosen mean water temperature we wish to use in a design. So, for example, if we've got the charts um, showing us at delta T50 and we want to do a Wiesman design, um, we can put our, our two design criteria into the calculation and come up with the F1 factor, which is the adjustment factor for radiator output. And the, the formula is quite simple. It's the actual delta T. So that's the delta T we want to use. Um, divided by the catalogue delta T, that's the 50 from the catalogue, um, to the power of 1.3 and that gives us our F1 factor. That F1 factor is used, you multiply uh, the radiator output in the catalogue by that factor and it will give you the reduced output that you would get at the lower DT. You can use a reciprocal of that F1 factor as well to actually work out what size radiator you need to select from the chart to give you the correct heat output. F1 is a value we need to re-evaluate the output of the listed radiators. We can transpose this formula to allow us to calculate the required mean water temperature and so flow temperature to achieve a given output. Previously we looked at the output relating to change in outside temperature. We are now able to relate this to boiler flow temperature and plot our weather comp curve or slope. Let us look at the maths for the radiators. Sibsi gives us the actual delta T divided by the catalogue delta T to the power of 1.3 equals F1, where F1 equals the adjustment factor to apply to the catalogue radiator. So, the catalogue output at catalogue delta T multiplied by the actual delta T over the catalogue delta T to the power of 1.3 equals the adjusted output. So, let me just show you how we've got to that. So, it's just a, a sequence of logic they've given us the formula originally and we've just rewritten the statement so here we've got the f1 we're multiplying that by the radiator to get us the output so we're just restating stating this in a different order so in the catalog catalog output and catalog delta t multiplied by the actual delta t divided by the catalog delta t to the power of 1.3 will equal the adjusted output okay so now, I can't say I found this particularly easy doing this transposition. Maths isn't my strong point, but um, it's amazing what comes back. You think I did my engineering um, training some 30, 30 odd years ago and haven't really done that much of it since. And it's amazing when you go through this, how you can kind of drag up some of the old information that you've got in your college days. But anyway, I hope I got it right, <laughs> having said that. So by transposition, we can produce a formula to calculate the required actual delta T for required output. So the new formula from that has come up with the required actual delta T, 
which is the mean water temperature uh, to the air temperature, equals the root of 1.3 root of the required output divided by the catalogue output at catalogue delta T multiplied by the catalogue delta T. So again, I'll show you this. So uh, this took a long time, but the required actual delta T, mean water out delta T. So this is uh, going to tell us what the mean water temperature of a radiator should be for a modified output is the root 1.3 root um, of the required output. So that's the new output in watts. So let's say we went from one kilowatt to a 500 watt um, output requirement. We put a 500 watts in here. The catalog output's a catalog delta T. So that's going to be our 1000 watts from the original radiator times the catalog delta T, which is 50. And you've got a worked example. So we've got the, uh, here we've got 304 watts that I've put down as a, as a required output. We've got the thousand of the original watts of the original output of the radiator from the catalog multiplied by the 50. Um, and that gives us a um, delta T of 20. So this would be at 50, uh, 50, 30 design. So on Wiesman design 50, 30, we've got a um, delta T of 20. That's 20 mean water temperature to air temperature. Um, and if we prove it, we can use the verse of the formula. Excuse me. Uh, reverse of the formula, and we can come up with the same answer, proving that we've got the new formula correct. So, all right. So, what we've done next is I've gone through that ca calculation. Um, for the various outputs that we used from the previous example. So again, we've got the delta T23, delta T15, delta T10, and delta T5 from the previous example where we plotted the original graph showing the heat loss of the property. We have applied the calculations for the adjustment for mean water temperature, and we've recorded the required mean water temperatures for each of those outputs and that's obviously related to the outside temperature. So, which leads us to our graph. And what we've got here is we've got a plot of the mean water temperatures that we've calculated. At our target temperature, we've gone back to our delta T of 20. And of course, as we go back, these all come back to convergence point um, at 21, 21. And show a reduction in delta T as we come back through the range, um, back towards our target point, and also the relationship here between the, the mean water temperatures and the flow temperatures and the outputs and the outside temperatures. So as on the Wiesmann boiler, it works on flow temperature. The curve we're actually interested in is the flow temperature curve, not the mean water temperature curve. The mean water temperature curve is the effective um, curve but the one we can actually measure and control is the flow temperature curve. So in the Wiesman manual, you've got a, a series of these curves plotted and you would select those and the curves would vary depending on the original design of the radiator size. So this was a curve plotted for uh, based on using radiators at uh, Delta T 50. And obviously if we were using the Wiesman radiators, that the curve would be somewhere down here. And obviously, if we're running a curve down here, we can see that we're going to be below condensing temperatures much more of the time. But even here on this example, using a um, Delta T50 radiator, we're sort of in condensing range on the flow, temp even within the flow, down to about, what's that, about 8 degrees. So we've still got a lot of efficiency by using weather comp, by applying weather comp as our control strategy. Um, even without having the oversized radiators. And the interesting thing for me with weather compensation is that I'm fitting it, is I'm regularly finding I'm applying Wiesman's curve of 1.4 to the existing radiators in a property. And the 1.4 is what you would use for 5030 design. So with all the added insulation, the oversizing of the radiators originally with all the extra allowances, and the added insulation put into properties, very often the existing radiators in a property are already the correct size 
to get pretty much the best efficiency from weather compensation on a Viesman 200. Um, when we fit the boilers and we fit weather comp, we actually do it the other way around. We don't do all these calculations. We just fit the boiler and then we set it up to what we think the curve might be, which is usually starting at 1.4. And then we wait. And if the house isn't getting up to the correct temperature uh, relative to the outside temperature, we raise the curve. And if it's too hot, we reduce the curve until the temperature we're asking for matches the temperature we're actually achieving. And it's as simple as that. Okay, a little bit more complicated than putting a room stat in, I guess, when you're setting up because you've got to make some adjustments. Whereas with a room stat, you just leave them getting too hot, too cold, switching on and off and cycling like crazy and all the other problems. Um, but you don't have to do any adjustments. You fit it, walk out and forget it. Uh, weather comp's not quite the same. Uh, with this one, we've got to, you know, have got to monitor it and just make some adjustments. However, I find with most of my customers that I can just explain to them that you know, if the house is colder than they're asking it to be, raise the curve. And then when it matches, don't raise it anymore. And most of them find it's perfect from set, set up. Occasionally they might have to adjust it. And very, very occasionally I might have to go back or I get a video call to, to make that adjustment on the boiler. Um, now I know there's a lot to go through there. There's a lot of theory and uh, it's a long video as well, we're on nearly 22 minutes of video and I don't know what mistakes I've made in talking about it, discussing it either, probably plenty, but um, I hope that helps. If it doesn't actually explain it to you, at least it gives you some insight into it and you can come back and ask more questions about it. Um, but please don't let it put you off. Um, almost everything we've discussed there is not actually the weather compensation section of it, it's actually the understanding of the relationship of radiators to output and to heat loss um, rather than actually weather comp. Once you understand those heat loss factors and the way the radiators work, really understanding that weather comp is, is quite straightforward. Um, all right, well, I, I hope that um, helps.